Darius is one of the oldest, most venerated, and most popular shooting game franchises of all time. And most importantly, it's one of my favorites. It's got this incredibly unique vibe that partners spaceships, giant mechanical fish, trippy visuals, and extremely experimental soundtracks. <laughs> with some of the slickest shoot 'em up gameplay I've ever experienced. The series started in 1986 with the original three-screened wonder cabinet and followed that up with plenty of arcade and home console sequels and ports. Counting the main series alone, and not ports or revisions, there are seven games across almost four decades. It's also one of the only classic shooting game franchises that's still somewhat active. Of all the classic shmup series like Gradius, Salamander, Star Soldier, 1942, Twin Bee, Truxton, and Thunder Force, only a handful of the OGs like Darius, R-Type, and Alesta are getting new releases with new content in the 2020s. Shout out to GG Alesta 3, a brand new Alesta game built for, I kid you not, Game Gear specifications. For Darius, this is because of the Darius Burst series of games. Well, it's not really a series of games. but well, it kind of is. It's honestly pretty hard to navigate. So recently Taito released Darius Burst CS Core for Nintendo Switch, and a lot of the response I saw online was, wait a second, is this different from Darius Burst CS? Is this different from Darius Burst ACEX Plus? Why is Space Harrier in it? There was just a lot of confusion. I even made a handy chart for people, and while it sort of helped people understand what the differences are, it didn't really explain why there are so many versions and what the meaningful differences themselves are, if any. So I wanted to take the time to go through the history of Darius Burst, explain all the versions and revisions, and clear up the confusion of this convoluted series of games that I believe is definitely worth your time. Meditate, 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 meditation. Nineteen ninety seven's G Darius was the last major Taito developed Darius game. It's a fantastic game, and many people consider it the best in the series, if not one of the greatest shmups out there. Sadly, it also left the series in a drought that lasted thirteen years. The story for how Darius Burst actually came into being is quite fascinating. It all started with a sole Taito developer who just really wanted to make a new Darius game. His name is Hiroshi Aoki. He tried pitching for a new Darius as early as 2005, but it wasn't until 2008 when he met with game developer Pyramid that they finally got things off the ground. Pyramid was hot off the heels of their popular Patapon series of games, and while initially envisioned as an arcade game, Darius Burst ended up shifting platforms to the PSP, just like Patapon. In 2009, Darius Burst released on PSP in Japan only, marking the first new Darius game since G Darius. Despite being the start of the entire Darius Burst series of games, this PSP version of the game is probably the least available version of Darius Burst. If you want to play this game outside of emulation or importing a physical PSP copy, your only option nowadays is 2012's Darius Burst SP, which is a mobile phone port that adds some content from the later arcade release and a new SP motor range, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. This first game introduces the key elements of the Darius Burst series that were totally new at the time. First is multiple ship selection. Second is the return of classic ships from older games. Third is the burst laser. And the fourth is that it has multiple modes of play. So in a series first, Darius Burst allows you to choose from three ships right at the start. The Legend ship, the Next ship, and the Origin ship that's from Darius 1. This is a really cool feature that increased replayability and it was also greatly expanded on in the future releases. The biggest mechanical change for the series was the addition of the Burst Laser inspired by the Alpha Beam from G Darius, which was itself inspired by the Beam from Metal Black, 
This allows you to build up a burst meter and unleash it to deal massive damage, get a massive score bonus, and counter enemy lasers. You can also detach the laser and control it independently of your ship, allowing for even greater score. Lastly, the game includes multiple modes, including a mission mode and burst mode, an arranged mode that removes weapon power-ups and lets you swap between missile, laser, and wave shots at any time. A burst mode is still actually exclusive to this PSP version of the game. It's worth noting that in arcade mode, you play through A and B no matter what route you choose afterwards, and then it plays like a standard Darius game with uh, 26 stages total. The PSP version was enough of a success that Taito asked Pyramid to develop an arcade version of the game using the same assets and gameplay, but greatly expanded upon and otherwise redesigned from the ground up. Thus, in 2010, we got Darius Burst AC. followed by a revision in 2011 called Darius Burst ACEX. This game would form as the basis for all console versions of the game moving forward. When people talk about Darius Burst, they're talking about Darius Burst AC, not the forgotten PSP game. Darius Burst AC brought back the ultra-wide display of classic Darius games, but it pushed it even further with two 16x9 monitors expanding the display size to a massive 32 by 9. It brings back the body sonic feature from the original Darius game, where the cabinet actually shakes via clever use of a subwoofer. It also pumps up the enemy count with brand new levels that absolutely flood the screen with popcorn to blast through. The developers of this game said that instead of trying to create a horizontal bullet hell game, they aimed to make an enemy hell game where huge waves of enemies try to overwhelm the player. It's quite brilliant as bullet hell games can be quite awkward or difficult in a horizontal space, but Darius Burst feels quite natural. Darius Burst AC also adds a dedicated turn button, allowing you to flip your ship's direction at a whim. And it ups the ship count to four, adding the brand new formula ship. The EX revision adds another four ships, bringing the count to eight, and bringing back the ships from Darius 2, Darius Gaiden, G Darius, and Darius Burst SP. This is also the first Darius game to support simultaneous four-player co-op. The original Darius Burst and SP were single-player only affairs. When you boot up Darius Burst AC EX, you are greeted with four options, original mode, Original EX Mode, Chronicle Mode, and Event Mode. Original Mode is the classic arcade mode. The, this game actually shortened the play requirement down to three stages per run, which uh, keeps it quite nice and snappy compared to the original Darius Burst. It also allows you to choose from multiple starting stages, unlike previous Darius games. Original Mode EX was introduced in the ACEX revision and is a similar concept to original mode, but includes new levels, new bosses, and a much higher difficulty. Chronicle mode is an interesting mode because it was created out of the idea of bringing something completely new to the arcade and game center crowd. It consists of thousands, yes, thousands of stages split between multiple planets that you must liberate by completing the red missions on the grid. Each planet has stages that, when completed, unlocks the stages next to them, eventually allowing you to tackle the red stage, liberate the planet, and move on to the next one. As you can guess by the sheer amount of stages, this was not intended to be completed by one person. Instead, the progress made in this mode is actually saved to the arcade cabinet itself, and the community is supposed to tackle this mode together. It's a really cool concept that arcade regulars really latched onto. It offered this weird sense of communal progress that I've only ever seen in, I don't know, Nobi Nobi Boy? In the console ports, this is achieved over a network, choosing a virtual machine as your cabinet. Event mode was another forward-thinking mode designed to bring arcade players together. 
By having the arcade cabinet connect to a network, Taito could release new time-limited events with special rules that would give players a few weeks to get a high score and compete with every other Darius Burst arcade cabinet in the world over the network. It's similar to modern time-limited events in service games like Fortnite. A pretty cool idea, but once the event was done, it was removed from the machine so you couldn't play them anymore. This also helped build a bit of community around these arcade cabinets. Not only were you trying to liberate all the planets in Chronicle mode, but you could then compete with other cabinets in event mode. In Darius Odyssey, Cosmic Voyager, they actually have an interview with some Darius Burst players, and it honestly really resonates how nostalgic they sound, reminiscing about new event drops and collaborating to share strategies and try to beat the other cabinets around Japan and make sure that their game center had the top score. It's, it's kind of cute, and, and honestly, such a forward-thinking concept for an arcade game. Anyways, that's the history of Darius Burst. Not too confusing, right? Some weird names and some convoluted modes, but it's pretty straightforward. There was a PSP game, an arcade game, and then an enhanced version of that same arcade game. Except, here's where it gets confusing. There are four different releases of Darius Burst spread across three different platforms, all released over the course of six years. Let's break that down and explain. The first and most important port of Darius Burst is Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors. This was released on both the PS4 and PS Vita worldwide. In addition to an arcade perfect but untranslated port of Darius Burst ACEX called AC Mode, it also offered a brand new home console mode called CS Mode. This turns Darius Burst into a stage-based story mode, where you unlock stages on a grid. It sounds kind of like Chronicle mode, I know, but it's much smaller in scope and scale, and is developed with home console players in mind. Gameplay takes place in a ratio closer to 16 by 9, it has its own exclusive stages, bosses, music, and a brand new playable ship called the Murakumo. However, the Murakumo is only playable in this mode and not in AC mode. If you purchase one of 15 DLC packs for the game, you unlocked a new mode called DLC Mode, which was a version of CS Mode designed for use with brand new DLC ships. These ships were all guests from other games and were only usable in DLC Mode. There are DLC packs from Taito, Sega, Cave, Aiding, and Capcom. It's like shooting game Smash Bros. One thing worth mentioning about the AC Mode in Darius Burst CS is that Event mode is not included. There's a button for it on the AC menu, but you can never click it. It's kind of weird, but it's emulating the arcade game, so I guess it makes sense as you would only be able to access event mode if there was an active event, but it's still kind of odd. Either way, just making it clear, you have no event missions in this game. For a while that was it. Darius Burst CS got a port to Steam with support for ultra-wide displays, but after that things were quiet. That is, until the advent of the Nintendo Switch, which has become kind of a shmup haven for developers, causing a serious renaissance of the genre. Taito took notice of this and released Darius Cosmic Collection in 2019, and followed it up with Darius Cosmic Revelation in 2022. Cosmic Revelation is a double pack of G Darius HD and Darius Burst ACEX Plus. Both of these games also got standalone digital and physical releases. Darius Burst ACEX Plus is a kind of final update for the arcade game Darius Burst ACEX. It does not include the CS mode or the DLC mode from Darius Burst CS. So I know what you're thinking, why, why would they only port half of Darius Burst CS? Is this still worth it if I already own Darius Burst CS? While I can't really answer those questions, I can explain what this new game is about and what makes it unique. So Darius Burst ACEX Plus is a brand new revision of Darius Burst AC for home consoles. It includes everything from the previous version of ACEX plus the following additions. 
first major addition is event mode. Not only have they included all of the event missions from the original arcade release of the game, they've also created new EX Plus events that are entirely new and original and exclusive to this home console port of the game. These have new music, uh, new stages, and, and more. Some of these are incredibly useful, like an easy and instant way to practice some of the hardest bosses in the game, like GTV. Others are just new and more challenging stage runs. The next major addition is the inclusion of the Murakumo ship from Darius Burst CS. Remember how I said the Murakumo was not playable in AC mode? Well, now it is. This is a big feature as the Murakumo is one of the best ships in the game and great for beginners. AC EX Plus also offers instant replay functionality, a ghost score that allows you to see how your score compares with a top ranked player live, rumble features that emulate the body sonic feature of the arcade cabinet where it would shake your ass when the game got loud, and better graphics and resolution on PS4 compared to CS. The last major addition is that the game is finally in English. The game is actually translated this time, which honestly it should have been in the first place. Now, this all sounds pretty good, but like I said before, it does not include CS or DLC mode for Chronicle Saviors. So, to rectify that, Taito has released another game. Darius Burst CS Core. This is the other game included in the original Chronicle Saviors release, CS Mode. It also includes, bundled natively, the DLC packs for Taito and Sega ships. The Capcom Cave and Aiding ships are not included and they will not be released for CS Core. However, CS Core adds its own new exclusive editions over the original Chronicle Saviors release. First is that they've added six new areas to CS mode. Remember how I said the PSP content never got ported to anything except for mobile devices? Well, that's changed now as included in the new stages is remixed PSP content, remixed ACEX Plus content, and entirely new levels, including one that is specifically for practicing counterbursting. Why is it taking this many releases to get a counterburst practice mode? They've also added replay saving, ghost score, and body sonic HD rumble just like ACEX Plus. So that's the lowdown, but which one should you buy? That's a complicated question with a complicated answer. For what it's worth, I personally think that Darius Burst ACEX Plus is the best and most complete release in the entire series. The AC mode is the most important to me, and I'd rather pay $40 for the AC mode with better graphics, event mode, EX events, and the Morocco mode than $60 for Darius Burst CS. But that's just me. If I'm looking objectively, if you already own Darius Burst CS, I don't think you need to go out and buy any of these new releases unless you're an absolute Darius diehard or really need to play it on the go. If you don't own any of these games, it's really a balance between what you value most. The cost of picking up Darius Burst ACEX Plus and Darius Burst CS Core is pretty much the exact same as picking up Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors plus the Taito and Sega DLC packs down to the dollar, but with more and better content included. So if you only have a Switch or you prefer gaming on the Switch, it's the way to go. If you've only got a PS4 or a PC with Steam, then honestly, Darius Burst CS offers a better value on its own than Darius Burst ACEX Plus, since you can't buy CS Core for PS4 or PC. Darius Burst CS is also the only way to access all of the DLC, which is pretty cool, but it also costs more money on top of the base purchase. If you're a total noob to shmups, I'd recommend picking up either Darius Burst CS on PS4 and Steam or CS Core on Switch and sticking to CS mode to start. If you're a seasoned shmup veteran, pick up a copy of ACEX Plus and get right to the good stuff. 
Ultimately, at the end of the day, any release of Darius Burst is worth picking up, and I don't think you should fret about getting the perfect version of the game or missing out on content. All the content differences between all the versions are pretty minimal in the grand scheme of things, and they're all good games. It's just upsetting how needlessly complicated the whole process of deciding to buy a Darius Burst game could be. Anyways, that's my two cents on it. Do you agree? Have you played all the Darius Burst games? What's your opinion on the series? Uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.